Before I actually demonstrate how to obtain and install Node.js on the Raspberry Pi, I'm going to cover one command that I'll be using in the next lesson to help with the installation, which is curl. Curl is a cross-platform command line utility used for transporting files over different protocols such as FTP, HTTP, HTTPS, SFTP, IMAP, SMTP, etc, etc. There's also a libcurl development library available that you can use in your projects if you ever have the need to transport files programmatically. Now I'll demonstrate just a few basic ways of how to use curl here in order to get your feet wet. I'll first need to SSH into my Pi, so I'll just open the shell of Power, also known as PowerShell, and then run ssh pi at goodpy. And of course, pi is the username, goodpy is the name of my Raspberry Pi. And then I'll punch in a password of abc123. Perfect. Now the most basic usage of curl is to type the curl command followed by a URL, which simply just retrieves the document at that specified URL. So as an example, I'll just pull down the document for the homepage here at devmashup.com by calling curl www .devmashup.com. Now by default, curl will just spit the document out to the terminal window, as you can see here, but it can be redirected to a file or even suppressed altogether by using different options or piping the output into other commands if you'd prefer. Now in this case, the output does show that the document retrieval was successful, but does indicate that we will have to hit the URL using the HTTPS scheme in order to get the full document for the devmashup homepage. Now this is because I set up a rule on my server to forward all non-secure requests to HTTPS. So with that in mind, I can try my request again using the HTTPS scheme instead. So I'll just type in curl, HTTPS, whack whack, www.devmashup.com. And now you can see the entire HTML document, including all JavaScript and CSS, right here in the terminal window. Now this is one of those cases where it would probably be beneficial to redirect the output to a file in order to scroll and read through everything a little more easily. Now I do want to point out that in cases where you get a 302 error like I did with the first example, you can actually use the capital L option with curl to have it automatically retry the request using the URL return in the response instead of having to manually type out another curl command with a new URL like I just did. So for example, I will run my original request again, but add the capital L option this time around. And as you just saw, after a second of processing the initial response, Curl determined that it received a 302 error and tried the request again at the URL specified in the original response document, which resulted in the same output I got with the second command I ran just a bit ago. Now I'll cover the L option a little more in depth in the next lesson, however, as we'll be using it there as well. Now those are just a few basic examples of how to use Curl, and I'm not going to cover all of the available use cases here in this lesson. However, if you want more information on Curl, a command you can run is curl help to get a quick list of the options available. Now that of course just kind of flew on by there, and if I scroll up, the buffer doesn't quite contain the full output, so I can't see anything at the beginning. Now to get around this problem, I can pipe the output into less in order to scroll through the docs at my own pace. Now another way to access help documentation is to run curl with the dash dash manual option, which I will also pipe into less in order to be able to scroll through it a little more easily. And this, as you can see, is a lot more verbose than the dash dash help option. And of course, you can always just use the good old man command and feed it curl as an argument, which gives you a similar output to the dash dash manual option. If you just want a quick listing of the available options for curl, use the dash dash help option. Otherwise, for a more in-depth overview, use man or the dash dash manual option.